Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today we'll be talking about the differences between somatic symptom disorder, factitious disorder, and malingering. And all three of these disorders have symptoms or symptoms are presented that can't be explained medically. What are some of the symptoms? What are some of the things that we might see in somatic symptom disorder? So when we're talking about somatic symptom disorder, we're going to see someone worried about physical symptoms that can't be explained. So they have persistent high anxiety about these symptoms. They put excessive time and energy into thinking about these symptoms. And there's disproportionate and persistent thoughts about how serious the symptoms may be, what they may indicate. The symptoms themselves for this disorder have a wide range. There's a number of different types of pain that the person can feel, and they are genuinely experiencing these symptoms. Also, there can be dizziness, fatigue, shortness of breath, vomiting, muscle weakness, nausea, and a variety of other symptoms we wouldn't consider pain, but of course they're very unpleasant. Well, I heard that there are some disorders where they don't really experience some of those physiological symptoms. What are those? Right, so as I mentioned with somatic symptom disorder, a person who has this genuinely experiences the symptoms. If the symptoms are faked, if they're not real, that would likely be either factitious disorder or malingering. Now, factitious disorder is an actual mental health disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And this is where somebody pretends to have symptoms to gain sympathy. This is a deliberate act. Lying is involved here. And usually somebody with this disorder agrees to any number of tests, including invasive tests, that are designed to figure out what illness they might have. They'll go through extremes to appear ill as well, including hurting themselves. They'll become upset typically when they're confronted with evidence that shows that they don't actually have symptoms. So malingering is a different type of condition altogether. It's not a mental health disorder. It's what we call a V-code. So it can be the focus of clinical attention, but it's not officially an actual mental health disorder. And malingering is fairly similar to factitious disorder, except with malingering, there's an external gain. It's also deliberate, just like with factitious disorder. And somebody who's malingering may avoid the painful tests that somebody with factitious disorder would not avoid. We can think of factitious disorder, somebody with this disorder, doesn't really have anything to gain other than sympathy by faking these symptoms. Whereas if somebody with malingering does have something to gain. How can we tell if a client is telling the truth about the symptoms that they're having? That's a great question. When we start talking about somatic symptom disorder and factitious disorder and malingering, it gets into a delicate situation. We want the best for clients. We want to diagnose them accurately. And we certainly don't want to accuse a client of faking symptoms. A lot of times when somebody has symptoms, of course, they're telling the truth. So these disorders, like factitious disorder and somatic symptom disorder, are fairly rare. So. With somatic symptom disorder, of course, they really have these symptoms. So it's fairly straightforward. If they meet the criteria, we would diagnose them and, of course, try to help them. With factitious disorder, it's not always as straightforward. Again, they're lying about the symptoms. And if we accuse them of lying, a lot of times we'll get defensiveness and we're not helping them. So we want to accurately diagnose. And, of course, we want to be sensitive to the fact that when somebody's lying, they're probably not going to want to admit that. There is a pathology here with factitious disorder, though. They're looking for sympathy, they're distressed, there's anxiety. So an accurate diagnosis could lead to treatment that would help them. So it gets into a tough area. There is no perfect answer for that question. What is the treatment that would be necessary for either fictitious or malingering if they are just lying and they're adamant about the lying? Well, malingering is a V-code and that means we could treat that. Uh, typically that is difficult to treat because that is deliberate lying for external gain, but perhaps a intervention like cognitive behavioral therapy to help somebody become more aware of their thoughts and their behaviors and their motivation would help. And probably the same thing would help with factitious disorder. Although factitious disorder is an actual mental health disorder, 
the individual there is looking for sympathy. So again, we might be able to connect the faking symptoms with the sympathy, looking at like a cognitive behavioral stance and try to help them finish that connection, to complete that connection and realize why they're behaving the way they are to help gain some insight and then eventually to help them to avoid faking symptoms so they can begin a road to recovery.